Welcome back to Mr. Erland's Geometry. In this lesson we're going to talk about constructing an angle whose measure is equal to the sum of two given angle measures. So for example we're given a blue and a red angle number one and number two. and We want to construct a single angle that is equal to the measure or whose measure is equal to the sum of these two. To do this we're going to basically copy an angle as you've seen in the previous video but do it twice. Now in order to copy an angle, the first thing we're going to do is recognize that an angle is simply two rays with a common vertex. So if I want to produce a copy of the angle over here using construction techniques, meaning just a compass and a straight edge, ruler without any marks on it, the first step is to have a ray. And the first ray is free because the ray can be anywhere. The expectation is that it's more important after I get that first step to find out exactly how open this mouth is. That's the challenge in copying the angle. But the first step is to provide a ray, just like this ray. That first one's free. The next step is to recognize that I want to copy this width onto this angle. But the problem is the width changes the further and further out I go in my angle. Therefore, I have to get some sense of bearing or establish a baseline. So as is true in many constructions for angles, I'm going to begin by making an arc across my known angle, and I'm going to retain the measure of this, in other words, the size of the compass, and I'm going to carry that over to my new angle, which at this point is just a ray, and I've copied this length over to here. Had it gone off the end, I would have extended my ray, but I think I can still read where the original ray meets my arc. Now what I want to do is recognize exactly how far up this the ray is supposed to meet. Because I've established the correct distance, what I'm looking for is, what is this distance? What is the length along this new arc where this ray will meet? By copying this length, adjusting my compass to meet exactly that length and bringing it over to my new angle, I can determine how far up this arc my new ray should be. So what I'm going to do is create a ray from this vertex through that point of intersection. And this is effectively the completion of angle 1, or a copy of angle 1, such that if this were angle 1, this is now angle 1 prime. But notice that I completed it with a dotted line. Now the reason I did that is because, in fact, I'm not just producing one angle. I'm producing a sum of two angles. Now angle two has to fit on right here on the side. So I'm going to start the same way. This is an angle made up of two rays with a common end point or vertex. Therefore, to construct that angle over here, I'm going to want to do it with a ray already given. Last time I used the blue ray as my starting ray. This time, I'm going to effectively use this purple dotted line. This is my free ray to start with. First one's free. Now I'm going to come back to my angle 2, use my compass to establish a baseline, an arc across this angle, such that when I drag it over here, using the same vertex I did before, I'm going to make another arc on what will be my red angle. Then I come back and say, how big should this arc be for this particular angle? I need to measure it, starting from that point of intersection on one ray to the point of intersection of that arc on the other ray and then carry that information back. From the red ray here is the same as from the red ray to the other red ray. From the red ray here is the same to where I should have my second red ray going. So I'll connect that. And what I expect is this is then 2 prime. And if we call this angle 3, we can say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3. As intended, effectively we've produced a construction of the angle addition postulate. Thanks. See you next lesson.